first. Bloomberg. All right, the fire in Yarnell, Arizona, burned through more than 8,000 acres, destroyed more than 100 buildings, and took the lives of 19 members of a firefighting team, the Granite Mountain Hotshots. We're joined right now by the congressman representing the district. He's proposing a new forest thinning bill to prevent massive wildfires we're seeing all too often. Congressman Paul Gosart, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. You know, in the last 40 years, we've seen a significant jump in western wildfires. Uh, we just had uh, the governor from Colorado on recently. His state suffered the worst wildfire on the books. Tell us a little bit about your bill right now. Give us some details on how this would work. Well, we severely mismanaged our, our forest health uh, across the West. And what this basically does is that it streamlines the processes for action from local and state communities when the federal government doesn't intercede and help us thin some of these fuels. In my first two terms, Trish, um, I've had the largest wildfire in Arizona history. And how do you put a price tag on that? And then you couple that with this year where we lose 19 lives of firefighters trying uh, desperately to save structures and human life, and they lose their lives. How do you put a price tag on this? So, so what it basically does is streamline the process and allow the locals interaction and uh, to justify uh, making sure that they intercept the problem. So you'd be thinning out these forests. You'd be cutting down a lot of trees uh, in hopes that you know we don't see, like what we're looking at on the screen right now, fires such as you saw in Arizona. Well, exactly right. When you start thinning Ponderosa uh, forests in my neck of the woods, there's 60 trees per acre is what everybody agrees to be the, the density limits. We now have two to 600 trees per acre, and when they burn, they burn so hot that, that people don't have chances to get out of the way. It kills um, the ecosystem, it sterilizes soil, and it kills endangered species. So it's a policy that's fraught with failings. Uh, representative, there are environmentalists who would, would take the other the side of the argument and uh, make the case that uh, there's a natural process to uh, or cycle to forests that they grow, they do burn, eventually they regrow. Um, what do you say about um, all of us getting involved in that process and, and, and having our own hand in it as opposed to uh, letting nature uh, run its course and manage itself? Well, when, when nature managed its course, there were big grasslands in Arizona and there were a few ponderosas, 60 per acre. So what ends up happening, the fire stayed on the grasslands. And the ponderosa pine has got a real thick bark and it was very deterrent uh, to those grassland fires. But now what we've done is we've strangled um, the watershed. There's no grasses. And in fact, I just visited last week a place where they actually thinned 140 acres to the proper management and they saw the water table raise uh, four inches on that, uh, that water table. So it's good prospective management, but you also have to start looking back at historical precedences, so be careful about the details in which you want to cite. And you know, as you, as you fly over Colorado, uh, uh, you realize just how vast it is, how uh, difficult the terrain is. I mean, how do you possibly, uh, uh, Arizona as well, of course, uh, how do you possibly manage uh, where you choose to cut? How do you, how do you possibly do that? Uh, we already have an agreement, Adam, uh, between environmentalists, uh, the Forest Service, and the logging industry. Um, the problem is we just barely got it started because of the ineptitude of the federal government. You know, these, this isn't rocket science, and I think with our biggest fire in Arizona history, you spent millions upon millions of dollars trying to put it out. You lost billions of dollars of assets, and as the environmental community, we lost 20% of the known supply, world uh, population of spotted owls. We lost. We all lost. Yeah. And we can't keep doing this over and over again. Uh, finally, before we let you go, environmentalists, uh, they're not necessarily in favor of an idea like this. Um, you know, and they, they also point to, to the fact that the timber industry could benefit. How do you answer their concerns, Congressman? Uh, we should be pay putting people back to work, the thinning the forest and using the product. That's what the western states were sold on by the federal government, is keeping these big, large swaths of public land open so where everybody could utilize them. But you've got to manage them right rightfully. You know, we can't have environmental groups that, that pertain to say, listen, we don't want to deal with the facts. What we want to talk is poets, poet, uh, poetry and philosophy. What we need to do is base it on the facts. I am a science guy. I'm based on facts, and that's how you succeed. You get rid of the emotion and deal strictly on the facts. Okay, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so very much for having me.